Ovulation tests are super helpful when you're trying to conceive or when you're charting or both. But the digital ones can be really expensive. So I recommend to most of my patients to just use these simple ones that have nothing more than a control line and a test line. And in this video, I'll show you how to use them yourself and not break the bank when you're charting. So I've got more reasons than the digital test being more expensive that I prefer these simple ones, but let me first explain you how to use them. And then you can stick around for my other reasons of why to stick to these over the digital ones. First of all, you want to catch some urine in a clean and dry cup. And here is a super important thing to know when it comes to the LH tests or the ovulation test in general, is that you don't use first morning urine because LH rises and falls for a couple of days before ovulation happens. So it starts to show up properly kind of mid morning, late morning. So don't use first morning urine like you would with a pregnancy test. So you catch some urine in a clean dry cup about mid morning, end of the morning. And then you stick in the test right side down <laughs> until the line that it indicates, the max line. Then you kind of can get some of the X's, fluid off, and then you can either put it on a piece of paper and then you wait, you see it show up the line and then you will have two lines if you are getting close to ovulation. So you have the control line, which is on the right. And then on the left, you will have another line show up if LH is detected in your urine at all. Now, if it is lighter than the control line, that test is negative. It does mean though that LH is in your urine. So something is happening, but as long as the test line and the control line are not equally dark, it's not positive. As soon as that does happen, you have two equally dark lines or your test line is darker. That means that your test is positive and that you are about to ovulate in the next six to 72 hours. But most of us ovulate within the next 12 to 24 hours. When you're trying to conceive, this is the moment that you definitely want to make use of because you are super close to ovulation and your chances of conceiving are the highest now. I've got a couple of videos on when to make love when you're trying to conceive, so go check those out. And if you want to know how to pinpoint when you actually did ovulate, because a test tells you you're about to ovulate, but it doesn't confirm it, then go and check out this video that I posted earlier this month. Of course, you can also learn to chart for free with my basics to fertility charting course, and it covers both ovulation tests and your temperature, as well as some other fertile signs. Now you might hear that some women test several times a day. You can do that. Now there's not a big point to start doing that if there is no second line at all. But if you see a second line and you want to make sure that you don't miss the positive test, then you could test again later in the day, say end of the afternoon, begin evening. If you're making use of your first window now regardless of whether you finally have that positive test or not then you can just ignore testing a second time but if you would love to not miss that double line the positive positive test then you can test again later in the day and then i always recommend to keep testing until you see a negative show up again on your um on your lh test and when you have seen that elevated temperature to confirm you've ovulated. Because if you're struggling with PCOS, for example, or your hormones are low, generally speaking, then you could still be missing out on your fertile window if you just rely on your ovulation test to be positive. If you don't have a confirmation of ovulation, then your body could be gearing up towards ovulation again later in the cycle and you thought you already ovulated and you're not making use of your fertile window anymore. So keep testing until you have a negative as well as elevated temperatures. And then some of you want to know when to start testing as well after your period. Well, that depends on how long your cycles are. Let's say you have textbook 28 day cycle and we assume that you ovulate on cycle day 14 then i would probably start testing around day 10 11 to see if you're gearing up towards ovulation to make sure that you're not missing out on earlier ovulation but if you haven't been charting at all yet and you're worried about missing out then i would probably start testing the day after your period stops and this is where the cheap lh tests come in you don't have to be as stingy as with the digital ones and here are a couple of other reasons that i don't like the digital ones if you've had your most fertile outcome of that test, you can no longer keep testing afterwards. And this is an issue when you have several 
parts in your cycle that you're getting positive ovulation tests without actually ovulating, which is very common when your hormones are low and you have long cycles, or if you have PCOS. So very impractical because you might think that you have ovulated and you might actually be missing on ovulation. So with the cheaper test, you can see the progression. So that's first of all, super helpful. You can see that you're moving towards ovulation. Also really helpful actually when you are trying to conceive while still breastfeeding. I've got a video on that as well. Recently did that, go check it out. You will then possibly have several bouts of positive tests as well. You might see the test line show up a little and then it goes down again and it goes up again and it goes down again until you finally have your double positive. But still with PCOS, it's possible that you still don't ovulate. So you want to make sure that you can confirm that. So the digital tests are not helpful for that. The LH tests on the contrary, or cheap, <laughs> you can use them several times a day, you can see the progression line and you can keep testing even after you've had your positive and you can finally confirm ovulation. If you're interested in more videos on charting, make sure to click on the playlist on your screen right now or go over to my Basics to Fertility Charting course that's completely for free and you can start today. In the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye lovely!